Hello and welcome. Today we're going to spend just a couple of minutes reviewing where the nerves that supply the dental related structures run and how they are related to the skull. But before we start that, let's just remind ourselves that basically the upper jaw has relatively porous bone. Porous bone that allows the local anaesthetic solution to permeate through the bone and actually affect any nerves embedded within this bone. And this similarly applies to the front area of the mandible as well. It doesn't apply towards this region here, the molar and premolar region of the mandible, because that region has very dense bone. That, uh, that blocks any local anaesthetic from permeating through the bone. Alright, so now let's have a think about where these nerves run because that's going to make the critical decision as to where you put the tip of the needle when you're giving local anaesthetic. The first nerve we're going to talk about is the infraorbital nerve that comes out through this foramen here, the infraorbital foramen. A network of small branches run in the bone or on the other side of the bone and run through and supply the anterior teeth and another little network of, of nerves coming off the infraorbital supply the premolar teeth and a little first root of the molar teeth. And if you remember back to the other video, you will know that uh, these branches of the infraorbital nerve, we'll start up here, infraorbital nerve, the branches to the teeth are the anterior superior alveolar nerve and the middle superior alveolar nerve and they supply the gingiva and the pulp and the oral mucosa around the teeth one through to uh, one through to in fact the middle superior supplies three let's get these colors right three through to six while the anterior superior supplies one through to three. And the last nerve for this upper jaw that we need to think about actually comes from separately around the back of the maxilla here and has its branches spread out to supply the upper teeth and that one is called the posterior superior alveolar nerve and it supplies the 6 through to the 8 and we are talking the pulps, the buccal mucosa and the buccal periodontal ligament and the buccal gingiva. So this is how the upper teeth on the buccal surface and the pulps are supplied. Let's move on now. Well, before we move on, remembering that this bone is porous reminds us that uh, this bone is porous reminds us that when the time comes to anaesthetize these teeth, we can actually put the local anaesthetic solution immediately adjacent to the tooth we want to work on, any of these sites here. And that solution will get through the bone and actually affect the teeth because this bone is so porous. So let's move on now and talk about the lower jaw. The lower jaw has that complication in it that uh, the nerve supplying the teeth actually is embedded in the bone here entering from the mandibular foramen on, on the medial surface so I'm just drawing it by x-ray vision here 
that runs down through the bone here like this around here and that nerve is called the inferior alveolar nerve and it supplies the pulps of all eight teeth and I'm just going to write pulp next to it just to remind you that it's slightly different to the uppers because it supplies the pulps themselves and it has embed it is embedded in this canal and sends little branches up to each tooth on its journey through the mandible. It has a branch, and you all know about one branch of it, it has a branch that comes out through this foramen here, and that branch comes out and supplies the lower lip and the chin and all of this region through here, and that one is called the mental branch. and it supplies lip, chin, gingiva, mucosa, around and uh, per periodontal ligament around the region of the sort of wherever the mental foramen is and we usually say the mental foramen is about at the level of the four or maybe to the five somewhere in that region so from the four around to the central, the one. So that's what the mental nerve supplies. Now what the question that we're left with is what supplies the buccal region around the fives and back to the eight? Well that's our old friend, the buccal branch of the mandibular division of trigeminal. And it runs across there, across that uh, um, retromolar pad and then spreads out to supply this region here and I'm just going to write it up here because I've run out of space so I've been silly in my writing and that's called the buccal nerve and that is sensory to the uh, cheek, the gingiva, the mucosa, the periodontal ligament around the eight back to sort of around the mental foramen area. We're just going to write four for now, but remember it could be the five. It just depends where it is. And just to remind you, that buccal nerve is separate from the inferior alveolar nerve. So the question now is, if we were going to want to anaesthetize some of these teeth, let's say we were going to extract a tooth or something like that, um, where would we give the local anaesthetic? Well, the first thing to remind ourselves is with the anterior teeth, the bone is porous. So we can put the solution next to the tooth. It will get through the bone and affect the inferior alveolar nerve, but at the same time it will affect the mental nerve. So that's fine in that region there. Similarly, if we were going to work on, say, three or four teeth in the anterior region, we could put the solution at the mental foramen here and it will stop action potentials from any of the region in front of it from getting back to the brain and therefore we would, would be affecting local analgesia. The problem is in this posterior region here where we can't get the solution through this dense bone. So that is when we use a number of uh, more technically demanding local anaesthetic techniques. The first is we can block the buccal nerve easy. We can just put a little bit of solution behind the last molar tooth and that will block the buccal nerve. And if we block the buccal nerve we can block sensations from you know the cheek, the, the uh, gingiva, the mucosa and the periodontal ligament in that area. But notice we haven't blocked the pulps of the teeth. So if we were going to do something that was going to affect the pulps of the teeth, we'd have to give the other technically demanding injection, which is called a colloquially mandibular block, but uh, technically it's an inferior alveolar nerve block, and we would have to give that near the mandibular foramen 
on the ramus of the mandible on the medial surface and we'll talk more about that later. So this is the key buccal surface nerve supplies for the lower jaw and then up here we looked at the upper jaw and what I want to do now is move on and look at from the lingual surface or where uh, the key nerves run. So we're going to move on and talk about lingual surface now. Now just to finish our quick summary of the key nerves and how they relate to the skull, um, I want to talk about the medial surface. And just to give you some orientation, see we can see the palate is in here, the mandible is here. Now, the key nerves that we need to think about here, firstly, let's remind ourselves that just hidden in here, right there where the spring is attaching, is the mandibular foramen, where the inferior alveolar nerve starts its journey in the mandible and it runs deep in the mandible here, around through the mandible, with branches running deep inside this dense bone up into the teeth, and that is there to supply the pulps of the teeth. Running just next to it, but on the outside of the mandible, running out through from sort of down this region, and just next to it, but running just close around and leaning on the bone here, is another nerve, and it spreads out all the way across into the tongue as well. And that nerve is called the lingual nerve. And the lingual nerve supplies the gingiva, the mucosa, and the tongue anterior two-thirds, and the floor of the mouth. From all the way from the eight right through to the one. And that nerve, if we were going to be extracting teeth, we would have to block that nerve as well, because, for example, we would be tearing the gingiva when we were extracting teeth. So the lingual nerve is a critical branch for the floor of the mouth. And the other branch that we need to remind ourselves from this medial view is the branch that comes out through here in the upper jaw, the greater palatine nerve. And that runs forward like this. And it supplies the gingiva and mucous membranes of the heart palate. Like that. So that's called the greater palatine nerve, and that's an upper jaw nerve, and it supplies basically from about the 3 to the 8, the gingiva and the palate, not the pulps of the teeth. Remember, the pulps of the teeth are supplied by the anterior, middle or posterior superior alveolar nerve from earlier on. And just to complete that story, just in case we get a little confused, there is also a lesser palatine nerve that runs out here, which supplies the soft palate. We'll just write it up here. Lesser palatine nerve, which is going to supply the soft palate. Now, for basic local anaesthetic, that's not going to uh, affect you or need you to worry about it. There is one other nerve here in this story that we can't really see in this picture, but we're going to just uh, remind ourselves. It comes out of the front of the palate, just up here, and spreads out across the anterior region of the palate. And that is called, well it goes by many names, I call it the long sphenopalatine nerve but others call it the incisal nerve, others call it the, uh, I've forgotten what others call it, but there's many, many names that this little nerve comes from. The other name I've often heard it called is the pizza, the pizza nerve, 
and uh, that's a little bit of a joke on the fact that that's where the cheese of a hot pizza sticks, that little lump behind your central incisors is where this nerve comes out and it supplies the same the 1 through to 3 region for the gingiva and the palate so it's sort of a reflection of the greater palatine nerve just in the anterior region so you've now seen the key nerves for the medial surface now let's imagine we're giving some local anesthetic what are the key features we need to think about well the first thing is if we wanted to work on the gingiva on the palatal side of these teeth here we always need to give the solution for the greater palatine nerve we'd give it a little bit behind the tooth we were going to work on so in this example if we were going to work on the gingiva around the 6 we give the solution towards the region of the 7 if we were going to work on the anterior teeth we'd give the solution next to the long sphenopalatine nerve now giving these injections in the palate is actually quite painful and you have to learn some special techniques to do that that's for somewhere else in the lower jaw if we are going to work on the gingiva of any of the um, lower teeth we need to block the lingual nerve and we do that by giving a little bit of solution into the floor of the mouth similarly a little bit behind the tooth in which we're going to work the good news is if we have to give the technically demanding mandibular uh, inferior alveolar nerve block when you give that injection you will get the lingual nerve nine times out of ten at the same time because the inferior alveolar nerve and the lingual nerve run very close to each other as they rise up from the mandibular foramen of the mandible so there's a summary of the key nerves on the skull that you need to know to give effective local anaesthetic